What do you think is the best course of action if your child has, let's say, certain problems like anxiety, depression, attention problems, aggression, or behavioral control issues? Let's say if you had to choose between two elements to solve those issues. You can get pharmaceutical prescriptions or drugs, I should say, that you can give your child to medicate them into the behavior that you're desiring. Or you can give the child music lessons. Those are your choices, but what would you choose? Would music lessons be comparable to giving a child drugs? Let's find out. In a research article, I'm going to give you the citation title first, and then I'll read you the press release. Citation title, a little complicated and wordy. Cortical thickness maturation and duration in music training, health promoting activity, shape brain development published in, you ready for this? This November. Journal of the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. Press release title, Could Playing Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker and Other Music Improve Kids' Brains? Now let's go into a little history of why the researchers decided to check out to see how music affected a child's brain. And wait till you find out to what extent did it actually impact, impacted that issue. As children age, the cortex, the outer layer of the brain, changed in thickness in previous analysis of MRI data. Budziak, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, and his team discovered that cortical thickening or thinning in specific areas of the brain reflected the occurrence of anxiety, depression, attention problems, aggression, and behavioral control issues, even in healthy kids. Those without a dis this diagnosis of a disorder or mental, il mental illness. Uh, duh, if I pronounce it properly. With this study, Hudziak wanted to see whether a positive activity, such as music training, would influence those indicators in the cortex. And here goes the discovery. This is the important part. The authors found evidence they expected that music playing altered the motor areas of the brain because the activity requires control and coordination of movement, which a lot of people would expect. Even more important to Huziak were changes in the behavior regulating areas of the brain. This is where it gets a little intriguing and very important. For example, music practice influenced thickness in the part of the cortex that relates to executive functioning, including working memory, attention control, as well as organization and planning for the future. And this is where it got real amazing, and this is the crux of the research. A child's musical background also appears to correlate with cortical thickness in, in brain areas that play a critical role in inhibitory control as well as aspects of emotion processing. How many child, I mean, how many parents may have problems with uh, the emotions or behavioral control of other children out there? The first thing that happens is they go to a medical professional of some sort, and what do they do? They prescribe them drugs. They try to medicate them into the behavior that they desire. They drug them into the behavior they desire. Wouldn't it be amazing It's just something simple is picking up an instrument, solve all those issues without having to become dependent on a pharmaceutical to basically get the desired result you're looking at of your child. But let's go proceed a little further to see what the researchers say. Researchers say, the finding bolsters Hudziak's hypothesis that a violin might help a child battle psychological disorders even better than a bottle of pills. We treat things that result from negative things, but we never try to use positive things as treatment. Where was this published? Once again, November 2014, Journal of the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. This is what they do. Now here is the telling part of the problem with our education system today, according to researchers, especially when it comes to music and behavior control, attention, and everything along those lines especially among high school students. This is what they said. Such an approach may prove difficult to accomplish. According to the study's authors, research from the U.S. Department of Education indicates that three quarters of U.S. high school students rarely or never take extracurricular lessons in music or the arts. If Hudziak's research proves true that music builds that basically the cortex of the brain and helps with emotional control, executive function, working memory, attention control, and basically emotional processing and inhibitory control, then you know what? Year one, that child gets into high school, or even better, junior high or elementary school, they should be instituting music training 
from the very beginning. If this cup pans out to be true, then imagine all the medications these kids would not have to take. Ralph Churchiano, signing off once again.